And also we're thinking about which platform should we actually host and keep basically all of those recordings. So if you've got any suggestions, that being YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever that is that you would prefer, again, do let us know. Okay. Um, so this is mostly that. Um, and what we're going to do here, just one more thing, <laughs> is that uh, we're going to do it every other week. Um, so we're going to have this conversation and then the following week we will aim to send an email with some news or some things that are happening locally, including uh, the recording as well. So that we sort of keep the momentum and really all um, start working that together. Okay, cool. Um, so we're going to kick start. So for today, hello. <laughs> so for today, uh, we've decided actually that we, Erica and myself, we're going to be in a conversation um, because we both run local businesses as well that are linked to the CFR economy. Um, so we decided it would be a, a nice way basically to start the conversation and then from uh, the following week onwards, we're going to have excellent people as well joining us. And to kickstart the conversation, we thought that it would be brilliant for each guest speaker to bring us something circular that they've got at home that basically embodies what the circular economy means to them and to their business. Okay, so we're always going to start the conversation with that. So Erica, would you show us what you brought us for today? Hello and uh Hope you're all enjoying your cup of tea as well or coffee. And um, today, actually, Sophie, I brought a little screwdriver with me today. And I think um, for me, this kind of embodies um, a little bit of where I connected with the circular economy, this kind of idea of, of questioning how stuff's made, uh, pulling stuff apart and getting really frustrated when things break. Um, being a kind of a product designer background, what I found is actually, you know, pretty much every product or everything out there, you can almost rethink how it's designed um, and by look, pulling things apart or looking at how you can repair things, that's almost a starting point to learn or question kind of how can you re redesign it and things around that in a different way as well. So, so this is my, my little uh, screwdriver that I've got, a little one also, because electronic products, they've got tiny little screws that, you know, sometimes actually not every screwdriver will fit it <coughs> uh, and uh, people like that. And you might need even a specialist one to kind of take things apart as well. So, yeah, that's my, my product today. Fantastic. So could you, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about the, the repairing aspect and how could people bring that back to their home? Yeah, so I suppose repair, it's quite, quite a hot topic or a growing one um, at the moment, which is really, really good and important. What we've seen is that actually around, um, around different countries around the world, there's actually a growing quite a citizen grassroots movement, really questioning and wanting and asking the right to repair. And um, I'll talk to my mum or dad, or, or maybe can some of the older generation, and they'll still have washing machines or vacuum cleaners or things like that. Uh, that are still working and maybe you can actually still fix them as well whether actually what you've seen over the last number of years and, and actually being an industrial designer or product designer you know I've seen that and been a part a bit of that is that shortening of kind of lifetimes or or not really as an engineer or designer being taught or within businesses to say well how how are we going to design this to be repairable in the first place um, but what's great is, and Reading actually has one of them, uh, there's um, kind of repair cafes um, popping up all around the world where different people um, who maybe have knowledge, whether it's sewing or technology or different things like that, um, volunteer their time to help local community kind of to fix objects. In London, the, you know, was also the home or the start of the Restart project, which, you know, really focuses on electronic products as well and, and thinking about how can we uh, repair and fix and also learning about what what kind of things actually get broken the most as well um so yeah there's there's a kind of informal repair communities popping up as well um and of course there's repair shops you know there are places and i think we're quite interested in reading to highlight different places that maybe you can go and get your your phone fixed or your laptop fixed, um, things like that. Um, 
nice little story over COVID. I, my laptop battery actually was dying very slowly, very slowly over the last couple of months. And of course, in lockdown, this is our kind of window into the world and our business. So I had to go through the procedure or like the really interesting consumer customer experience of trying to get a replacement battery for my laptop. Um, which was really not easy at all. Um, you know, they tried to sell you one that you can plug into the side. They say you're out of warranty. I was like, I know, but I would still like to get one to replace. <laughs> they tried to sell me an engineer as well who take my laptop away for 14 days um, to then, you know, get it sent back and repaired. This is the company that I use. Um, but then eventually, you know, I, I kind of got through and got, um, uh, yeah, a battery sent out, there's plenty of information actually informal on the internet from places like iFixit or other places like that. And actually you could actually, in this case, I could replace it myself and, you know, get it working. And it's like new, it's like new. And I think that almost shows how, how many potential products have a lot more life left in them as well um, around that. Ah, it's really interesting. And there's one thing, because you talked about the COVID. I also have a COVID story. I had a massive box <laughs> full of repaired stuff that I keep saying, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, but never done it until COVID came. And then I was like, now I've got no excuse. I need to do it. I was wondering, you know, like, do you have any tips for people? Because often the challenge is that you've got the best intention. You want to do it because you know this is the right thing to do. But doing that first step of okay, now I've done it, you know, it's like going over the overwhelming state, over the fight mm -hmm. and break it even further. I might not even know how to prepare it or to do anything with it. What would be your recommendation on people who fear the first step, if I can say? Yeah, and um, I think I've been, I've been putting, thinking about like for sustainable, like a lot of it is actually this element of, of slowing down a bit and accepting um, that, that you have to take a little bit longer in time. I think society, consumerism, you know, has, has almost built this inbuilt thing that we've got to have everything, you know, new or fixed or, or working again really fast. I mean, that, that would be great. <laughs> but, and I think that's me really where the repair um, movement or, or support and, and businesses and, and maybe online connections can really aid in that is how can we make making repairing something you know, almost as fast <laughs> as just going on um, online or buying a new one as well. But I think it is that, that kind of element, you know, you have to <sighs> breathe with, you know, your frustration um, and, and slow down a bit and say, well, hang on, if I really want to do um, you know, the right thing, if I want to question kind of the, 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 the cycle that I'm stuck in, it, it's almost, yeah, it, letting yourself slow down a bit and then what's great is it's so much more rewarding and enjoyable when you do it yourself I mean I was like pumping the sky afterwards I was like don't worry I you know still got my engineering skills so I think you know there's that that bit at the side of slowing down and taking the time um to learn or or even I, with my phone I've gone to a local um phone repair guy and, and kind of watched and taken apart and he let me like clean this bit with an old toothbrush and all of this kind of thing and it's it's fascinating and I think it's 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 building that connection with our things again um, and taking that time makes, makes it much more rewarding in, in the long term as well so yeah I think maybe it's counterproductive but yeah no, <laughs> take the time to repair <laughs> And you can inspire people because my daughter, she's now like, I was going to say breaking, no, putting in PC, into PCs, everything that she can find just to find out how it works. And there are all these things. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. one failed because it didn't work. What I tried to repair, it sort of inspired her to do it as well. So, yeah. Cool. So, Sophie, yeah. I think it's time to switch around and ask me, what have you brought uh, to show us today for our so, regular conversation have, starter? Let's do that. Haven't worn it. But this is my <laughs> Rapa Nui t-shirt, basically. Nice. And the reason why I brought this t-shirt is actually, it was um, a present from my husband. I didn't know the brand at all. Um, but then very quickly what I realized is what they were standing for. And they're really trying to 
change the way that the fast fashion industry is working and their view is that slowing it down is not enough. You need to truly change the way we're doing things. And when I that's really their mission and so on. That's something that resonated a lot with me. So I wanted to know more and find out a little bit more. Um, I find really interesting with these brands is that they've managed to join like a, a customer experience basically and the, and the customer belong like a link, emotional link to the brand with the business and what they're trying to do with all the efficiencies and doing well and good in a, in a world. So that's what I find really interesting. Um, and if you look at it from a, a pure uh, consumer point of view, so from my side, it's great quality, it's 100% cotton. Uh, so it's really nice. You can really tailor it so you can print what you want, or you can also buy some that they've got um, in stock. Their online experience is actually really good, so it's very easy to buy. And that's for me, I come from a customer experience and commercial background. It's like making sure that the experiences of the new, more sustainable solutions are as good as what people are used to is absolutely critical if you want them to basically switch to new one. So the fact that it was really easy made me really happy. And then inside, actually, they've got um, a little label. Uh, well, I'll just show you here. You've got the label with the QR. Uh -huh. yeah. When you scan that, it basically takes you to a page uh, where they tell you the entire story. So you can see from seeds, basically, to how they've um, harvested it, to how they've started the, the logistic aspect, as well as the fact that they're using uh, renewable energy to making it, and so on. So you've got the entire story of basically that T-shirt, and that I find as a consumer is, is quite cool to be able to see, because as you were saying, we're so disjointed with where these things come from that, yeah, I just really like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I noticed it's got pictures of what whales and dolphins. Is that is that significant? Is that yeah? So this one is from the, um, it's basically a marine conservation society. So that's yeah. what they're doing. So they're pushing messages through their design as well. And the thing is that the day where it's worn out as well, I can send it back to them. And again, I get like a again on my little label, small label that normally you don't look with a lot on it. Um, you get five percent credit basically on the next T-shirt that you buy. So yeah, it's like that thinking about you know the consumer. Then I get the deal back. I can do something else with it, and my consumer come back to me because there is a retention aspect to buy something else. So it sort of makes business sense, and it makes consumer sense, and it really builds that relationship. So I just quite like it. And now they're starting having a lot of materials coming back, and they got a new range called the circular T-shirts, where they've remade, they've used it to remake new T-shirts instead of going to get new resources. So I just really think it's a, it's a really nice story somehow. And I, I just like it. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that's that's an area that, that the whole fast fashion and fashion area during the COVID crisis that we've seen a lot of companies treating their employees bad, the kind of the system of um, very what kind of push really <laughs> driven whether that one, it sounds like it's got much more of a kind of demand side model or a kind of yeah. thing as well. Yeah. yeah, so exactly. So it's all the new value creation, basically, that companies can do and harness to, you know, be closer and build relationship with their customers as well. So we're doing quite well. We're spot on the time that we had said we will do. So, <laughs> so quite pleased for the first round. <laughs> uh, but we could chat for ages, but, but actually yeah. we want to kind of have the opportunities to open up to all of that you, you have um, joined. But first of all, what we'll usually do is the guests that we have on, whether it's a local business, individual, um, campaigning policy, that we're going to reach out to the resin and wider area uh, to, to kind of profile and signpost. But we're going to do a little poll this time to see what kind of sectors uh, will be really interesting to reach out to. We've, we've kind of already started like a little, little wish list of organizations and people that we that we might want to get on as well but um for this time we'll kind of ask ask the audience um which hopefully if i've got the poll up here um what kind of sectors in particular you'll be interested to hear from um i think it's multiple choice so you can uh, pick a few don't pick them all that gets confusing <laughs> Um, but yeah, usually we'll, we'll ask our guests to maybe signpost to a person or a local business or somebody, you know, and pass, pass the mic to um, as well and, and see what we're going. Ooh, interesting. And Sammy, it was really cool because I can see that people are starting 
themselves and sharing links and so on. So that's in the chat, which is uh, which is fantastic. And going forward, you can also use that to, you know, any question that crosses our mind, we can just add them there. So that's really cool. Thank you. Oh, I think everyone's voted now. Cool. Oh, you have a winner. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see that. Yes. So everyone's getting political and campaigning. This is quite quite good. I think we're all up for seeing um, kind of change and new things. Kind of probably taking the opportunity as well at the moment to really think about how more sector economy can go forward. Yeah. If anyone has got any specific name or organization and so on that you know uh, that we could reach out, um, do let us know when uh, we can just speak to that as well. Cool. So from today, from the conversation, so we talked about repair, we talked about um, the customer experience and the value creation that there is and so on, or anything else. Do you have any questions that you wanted to ask us or anyone in the group? Feel free to just unmute because we're a small group. <laughs> Eddie? Yeah, Gary is a good idea for Eddie as well. No. Okay. Are we tea or coffee drinkers? Is the question. Uh -huh. <laughs> like well. Tea all the way. No oh, tea. Oh, I've got my coffee now. That's fun. One, I think one, one, um, one session we definitely need to get a coffee, actual coffee business as well. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be good. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm really good. I am a tea drinker now. I can't drink coffee anymore. But... Oh, scones. Nice. nice. Yeah, oh, Maybe we do that. We do a, a morning break with something to eat. <laughs> Yo, what is it, Sarah? I can't get, I can't get my camera down. But... Oh, you generally have one. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um... This is really... Why nice. just have tea when you can have a cream tea? <laughs> very true. Very, very true. And um, just a question. Yeah, go on, have Robert. No, I was, going to say, I was just saying, I ate mine before I came on camera because it'd be too disgusting for everybody to see me <laughs> stuffing my face with it. It's, it I live in Pangborn. They do the most delicious cakes. And there's this thing called a Viennese world. It's very short uh, crust pastry sweetbread, a uh, shortbread kind of thing. And when you bite into it, it just explodes into shards. So it would be. <laughs> Very upsetting for everybody to, to watch me do that, <laughs> or amusing, or disgusting, I don't know. But um, a, a point I was thinking about when you said about the, the one that came up top was policy. Um, a lot of local authorities, Reading, West Barts, and lots of them are having uh, their environmental policies and so forth uh, published, and it's full of good intentions. I'm sort of caught in between being in Pangborn, I'm sort of in West Berkshire, but I'm more involved in Reading in a sense. But um, in that, they have all these aims and objectives. There's not generally an explicit element of circular economy, but mm -hmm. it might be interesting at some point to find out at a local authority level, you know, for example, Reading Council, that mm -hmm. all local authorities purchase enormous amounts of products and so forth from mm -hmm. suppliers. They may, may, may well have certain criteria to, uh, for their suppliers, you know, to whatever they might be, yeah. ethical employers and so on. So I just want, that might be one um, avenue worth looking at. And yeah, so like that procurement element as well. Which procurement is and also their, their broader yeah. policies. Yeah. Just an idea. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, and that's one thing actually coming up, the Reading Climate um, Festival it's coming up in November. Oh, is it? Oh, no. oh, yeah. yeah, so that's going to be a week in November. Um, and I think they've already got about 40 different organisations and different things happening. Uh, one of which me and uh, Sophie have challenged ourselves to do a little circular at home challenge. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> yeah. Kind of daily uh, events and, and things to, to kind of really bring uh, different parts of, I suppose, the, the Reading Climate Strategy to life through a circular lens as well. Um, so yeah, I think that, that's going to come, come out soon as well. So it will be a matter of really almost holding it to account as well, so, you know, making sure that, that a lot of what's in there really <laughs> happens in some form as well. 
Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time as well. We say we'll keep them sweet and short. <laughs> so hopefully that was the case today. Uh, but going to do is that we've already got two schedule, like so in two weeks time and two weeks after that. Um, and we will most probably, I mean, if the format works, we'll probably keep them going. Um, and if we really, really like them, we could even do them weekly. So we'll, we'll just see how this goes. But uh, any feedback, um, I'll, you know, we've got the, we've got your emails, uh, send a follow up one as well. Yeah. But uh, so anything you would like to see, um, what you sort of format, what work you would like to change, anything like that, just tell us. Yeah, and definitely. We... Sophie, um, yes. I, don't, I haven't checked this morning, but uh, when your email came through yesterday, I tried to book for, for all of the events that you've got uh, mm. up, but I think there were three of them. But the last one, it just bring, brings up a blank page when you click on tickets. I don't know whether that's... Oh, okay. Thank so you. It might be worth checking. Yeah. We do. like your commitment, though. <laughs> this is good. Yeah. Thanks for stress, stress testing. I, I have to be very <laughs> organised, so I have yeah, to plan yeah. in advance. <laughs> and, we'll, and one thing that we would say also is definitely, um, we'd love to be, me and Sophie would love to kind of get organised <laughs> with a lineup, I suppose, of different guests as well. So if, if also, if there's any of you uh, that would love to kind of come in and have a coffee conversation with us, also feel free to nominate yourselves, get in touch, or if you, as we said, some of those different sectors or policy and campaigns in, in different areas. If there's somebody in the, the local area or a business or somebody that you admire that you think is doing great stuff, then yeah, send send your ideas our way. 